Now back to the case against Jerry Sandusky and specifically his claims that he's innocent. The prosecutor is reacting to Sandusky's taped message, the one he released the night before he was sentenced, in essence saying the trial and everything about it was a joke. A well-orchestrated effort of the media, investigators, the system, Penn State, psychologists, civil attorneys, and other accusers. They won. It was banal in the extreme. It was self-centered. It was devoid of any connection with the reality of the harm he had caused. And despite so much testimony against him and ultimately a conviction by a jury, many want to know and are confused as to why Sandusky maintains he's innocent. Joining us to weigh in this morning is Dr. Stephen Bloomfield. He's a local forensic psychologist. Steve, thanks for being here this morning. Welcome. Good morning. In your career, you have interviewed many pedophiles. Any serial pedophiles yes. among them? Yes. yes, yes, both. So the question is, what goes through the mind of somebody like that? A, a pedophile is someone who, it, 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 you can't think of a pedophile as just a normal person who made a mistake. A pedophile is someone who has sexual fantasies and attractions and actions to prepubescent children, or kids who haven't shown any sexual features. What they engage in is what we call cognitive distortions, which really is wrong thinking. And, and primarily, the, the, they, they're involved in denial, denial, and denial. Everything about their, their lives, up until a conviction, and, and even after a conviction sometimes, is denial. When people who are actual pedophiles are convicted, they not only engage in denial, they engage in a series of cognitive thinking, wrong, cognitive distortions, wrong thinking, which involve blaming, blaming anybody you can. And that sounds like what we're hearing from Sandusky. It sounds like it. The, o the others sound like it also. It's blaming, minimizing, didn't really have, justifying, it happened because of this. Vic taking a victim stance themselves, that I, I'm the victim here. So can we say then, knowing all of this, that they're engaging in wrong thinking, that they have a mental illness? Yeah, they have, they're pedophiles. That's the mental that illness. That is the mental That's illness. That's the mental illness. And this is what it engages. And the treatment, I, I don't know, someone who gets 30 or 60 years is going to engage in treatment, but the, the treatment somebody would get would be a confrontation of these cognitive distortions, basically in a group setting usually where people say, no, that's wrong. You can't think that But how that much way. more does he need to hear that he hurt people? Uh, all the victim, well, not all, but most of the victims testified right in front of him. He's I got agree. prosecutors, he's got judges saying what you did was wrong. So what snaps him out of it, if uh, anything? It's very hard to say if anything snaps him out of it. Very often pedophiles uh, learn not to be pedophiles but still have the same thinking. They still have the same distortion. So sometimes the treatment is that you just don't do it, but you, you might have the same thoughts and you block them. But but you control your actions. You control your actions. But someone with, who's a serial pedophile is going to serve a lot of time in prison. Oh, I, I always wonder about his wife, Dottie. Yeah. Because she's stuck up by him this entire time saying there is no way he did this. A lot, it's How a lot, does somebody like that engage in that type of thing? It's a lot like codependence in, uh, in, in, in substance abuse and alcohol. People just lose, this, lose sight of what's really happening. They put blinders on. They, they sometimes can't believe it. Uh, and they they develop they they develop their own set of cognitive distortions, and it becomes a very odd experience. And I've got just a limited amount of time. I got to yeah. ask you though, in your experience, what would you advise parents to do in trying to protect their children? The things that parents can do to protect their children is the first, uh, don't teach your children to keep secrets. And the alternative we suggest, like a a birthday party or something, and you want to tell your child a secret, is make it a surprise, not a secret. Listen to what kids have to say. Notice big changes of behavior. And most importantly, watch out and be very leery of anyone who seems smitten with your child that normally wouldn't. Uh, a, a neighbor, a, a, an uncle who, who wouldn't normally starts doing things, presents, taking kids places that normally wouldn't. And then keep the conversation going with your child. So those things are a red flag to all you parents out there. Dr. Stephen Bloomfield, thanks so much for Thank joining you. us. You've got a lot of, I know you've got a lot of experience in these matters, and we're certainly learning from it.